All right. Hello, hello. Welcome, everybody. This is JAWS Coffee Chat, a mental health awareness. We are so glad everybody could join us today. Um, today is February 26th, 2024. As I said, this is another episode of JAWS Coffee Chat with Jennifer A. Whitaker. Uh, so we have Jennifer with us here today, and I am Elizabeth Oberkirsch of OMA Admin Services. We always like to give a special thanks to some great folks for replaying our shows on their platforms. Slayton of the PAC Channel, Jay Stoyan of the Disability Channel, and Lawrence Wingate of Wingate Studios. We definitely appreciate their support and participation. I'm going to hand it right over to Jen, um, but while you're watching this, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to our social media pages, our groups, our YouTube channel, or wherever it is that you came to find out us today. Jennifer, take it away. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another day here on Mental Health Awareness. And this is, if you haven't seen the last episode, our second one for the, all of us who are disabled to the road of independence. Many of us believe that being on disability, we cannot afford housing. We cannot afford uh, the things that come with it, like the utilities that we went over last week or a couple weeks ago, but our last episode. In our last episode, we covered rental assistance for those who are on disability that can get different programs to pay their rent for them so that they can get housing that they cannot afford, but they still have equal access to. Only with the advantage that theirs can be free because it's covered by government or nonprofit funding instead of their own bill. And we went into last time further into how to get your electric bill covered and other utilities covered by different nonprofits in your local area. And free internet, if you are on supplemental security income, Medicaid, SNAP, and some other programs. So that's just a little refresher of where we left off. So the ultimate goal is we are all considered disabled and on disability, whether we work at all or not, we receive that kind of income. Or even some people may be retired and have a low enough uh, income of Social Security that they do get Social Security income, even though they're not technically disabled, but they're retired and still on Social Security. But either way, if your income is below 1100 a month and it is not from working, but it's disability or retirement social security, you can get Medicaid, um, which is a health insurance provided by the government, uh, if you make that little. And just because you may be senior and on social security and Medicare doesn't mean you can't get Medicaid. The two said it wasn't better to have two insurances. If you make less than 43,000, then you make less, then you may make less than 1100 a month. I mean, you can't do, it's not just one or the other. If you fall under 1100, you fall under both umbrellas. So the, the, the great thing is then you can get two insurances through the government, um, which is more free stuff for us. So carrying on with that journey, you don't have to live with a family member. You can have your own place as long as your health allows such thing. And if your health doesn't necessarily Further look into stuff with Medicaid, like the waiver program, where since we last time were on the show, I now have uh, Medicaid providing me with uh, free meals and a caretaker and other things that are what has to do with my disability and things I need uh, that would get in the way of my independence but I'm an American. All Americans deserve equality. So just because I'm disabled doesn't mean I don't deserve to have my own place, right? <laughs> I mean, we're all Americans. So if you are on disability, the great thing is, well, many people have to pay for, like say a maid. Medicaid will pay for us to get free. They only call a caregiver. Because they help with anything you can't do, whether it's your house chores, it's filling your medicine organizer, it's looking out for you when you do different activities that 
you need someone to overlook. Like let's say with the epilepsy, I had to always have someone watching out for me when I was swimming. Okay, great. I have my own place. And if I want to go swimming, just take the caregiver. I don't have to worry about family never being off work or having to work, fit around their work schedules. My Medicare Advantage pays for the gym membership. If I want to go to the gym and I want to go swimming, take the caregiver, they'll be the one to look after me. So I'm not stuck in the system. Uh, you, you always have to be with your family member. But it has gone far beyond that. My gym, I can ride my bike too. Okay, but what if I couldn't ride a bike? Well, I can still get there because today we're talking about transportation. Many people don't know that if you're on Medicaid, you can also get free medical rides. So a lot of people think medical rides. Okay, so how do you get it? Well, first you have to call your Medicaid insurance, look specifically for the service, support services phone number, and ask them to connect you with the free transportation to medical doctors. Now, that's one way to get free rides. But it goes beyond just the actual medical doctor. It could be a therapist. It could be the ER. It could be a hospital. It could be a, even, say, uh, an X-ray or CT scan or something that's not actually seeing the doctor or blood work, but it's still something that the doctor ordered and needs to, to do whatever medical care that you're under. That's why you see him or her, the doctor. So all of those fall under that umbrella of their medical appointments, even though the people doing it may not be a medical doctor that you're seeing at the appointment. But it falls under medical. And that includes, in this case, even if it's mental health, by terms of, tra of transportation that Medicare or Medicaid will provide you, that it is defined as medical. And by that form, when it comes to transportation, medical and mental health fall under the same umbrella of something you actually need. And it's not just a designer as they go and copy. But then you come to, what if you do want to go shopping or you want to have fun? Well, how about then? Let's check in with, we've all heard in our big major cities, there are these metro systems, you know, it's a metro bus, metro transit, metro train. There's some kind of metro in pretty much all the, the urban large cities. And I'm one of those where I looked into this to find out, okay, so I can't drive and the closest park and ride of the Houston Metro is down the highway that I would have to drive to get there because the park and ride, and it's not in a community or something where you can just go on the back roads and ride the sidewalk and bike, no. So I did research and found that Metro in Houston has what they call Metro Lift, which is a curb to curb side transportation for anybody in Harris County, which is the main county that the majority of Houston is inside of, and actually found out not only can I get curb to curbside through them based on the fact that I'm disabled, which yes, involves a lot of tedious paperwork. I had to have my doctor put the reason I can't drive, that's the reason I couldn't just go to this to the um, park and ride. And he filled it out, then they got picky about, well, they didn't, he didn't put his license number. So they're very nitpicky to the tiniest little detail. So you have to be patient with these people. But isn't it worth the freedom that when you complete this process with like what Houston calls Metro Lift, but is that special needs disability services part of the Metro system, you can ride for free whenever, wherever, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, that's not to say you need to use it to go to a bar, especially if you have an alcohol problem, okay? If you've been, if you're, if you're trying to get away from alcohol, don't use it for that. But if you want to use it to go, go to the beach or you want to use it to go to the other side of the, the city for a mall you like, or even something that's more of a necessity, like going to the grocery store, Go for it. 
Okay, but well, wait a minute. What if the main county is not your county? Well, guess what? All counties have a transit. Just most people don't know about it. Like I live in Fort Bend County. That is one of the counties around Houston that's outside of and around the main central Harris County. Okay. So I found out Fort Bend had what's called Fort Bend Transit. Galveston had what was called Galveston Transit. Harris has what's called Harris Transit. <laughs> so you get the pattern, right? There's there's the word transit in the name of the county without the actual county word. That's the name of the transportation systems. <laughs> so most people only know about the metros and the metros are actually a partnership between two or more county transits. They are not independently their own transportation service. So if you ride the metro and you get registered with all the county transits, that is obviously the one you live in, the county you live in, their transit, but also the counties around it, like how the main city of Houston and most of it's in Harris, but I live in Fort Bend, so at least I want Harris and Fort Bend County. But then I decided I'm going to Galveston Beach. So I got Galveston County. So then I found out where I had called and I asked, how can I get from Fort Bend Transit onto Harris Transit and from Harris, once I'm on there, from Harris right it to the curb of Fort of Galveston County to switch onto the Galveston Transit if I wanted to go to the beach from my home in Katy. Well, they gave me specific stops. So I would ride one curbside ride to the transit for Harris County and then right all across Harris County until this exit called Bay Area Boulevard and then hop on Galveston Transit. And guess what? My best friend and I were headed to the beach. And what's the best part? It's all free. If you can prove you're disabled in whatever reason that you do not have the ability to drive. Mine had to do with my seizures I'll talk about. Many of you have heard me talk about my brain surgery that freed me from them. Uh, but I haven't yet to talk about the new seizures I have that are called non epileptic seizures, but it's a different diagnosis. But guess what? That means I can't drive. <laughs> so I went on to find out how can I make an asset out of that? Well, that means if I prove like my doctor did with a document stating that he treats me for these diagnoses, then I can go through this long, tedious process that's right now already taking me four or five weeks, maybe eight weeks long process. But in the end, I will be able to take all three transits free and be able to go anywhere from the far west Houston to the southeast that's on the beach, even to the, to the north side of Houston that's where my brother-in-law's family live and all in between. Why? because I proved I was disabled. I had no means of, of being able to afford it, no means of being able to get myself there because I don't even have the right to have a license with my conditions. But guess what? I can go anywhere else. Just someone else is driving me. <laughs> and it's free. So, <laughs> what do you think are some of the questions our listeners have so they can be in this boat, right in this boat, only it's a bus? <laughs> That's a good question. Um, our town is very, very small. And so we do have um, some vans that come around and pick it up. It's the County of Lee transit system. So it's Colts, C-O-L-T-S. So they had to switch it around to from Lee County to County of <laughs> to make it work with the, the macronym um because we don't have a metro because we're too small to even have a metro or a, a well, bus system that may be stafford or what did you call it stanford that's where you are but what about raleigh doesn't it because i think it had a transit when i lived with dad yeah but it's it's an hour away 
yeah. to county away. But you remember how I said the metro is in the major cities and it's actually not its own system. It's actually a partnership of the transits that are by the counties. So it may not be called yeah. metro. I, but I don't know. All I've ever seen here are the cult, is the cult. Right. The only thing so I've ever seen around here is the cult. To see, if fans. cult to see if cult has partnerships with other county buses to then say, well, hey, cult, how can you get me to county? Uh, Johnson County or somewhere else, county neighboring transit. So they'll say you were trying to work yourself into go see UC, uh, UNC Chapel Hill. I don't know, but like connecting county to county to county. Yeah, there probably is. I have not looked into it. I haven't needed to because I can still drive. <laughs> <laughs> no, but with cases like yours where you still drive, it, I mean, would you rather pay $1? to go from wherever to the end of that county to $1 from th this county to the next county, you know, a dollar per county as you as someone without disabilities, so you couldn't go free, but it'd be a dollar to cross every county line to say it costs $3 to go an hour instead of, I mean, I'm sure it's at least one tank of gas. That's $5 or something, right? And then you don't have yeah, to like worry said, about the stress of the driving. It. What? <laughs> like I said, I haven't needed it, so it, it's not something that I would look into. But I'm sure there are no, people who would. Yeah, I was going to say, because there's probably other people who are not disabled, but would want to know that they could do that to say that going through three transits, even though it won't be free, it would be a dollar per county that they ride through to get from Let's say, so let's say you're trying to go from A to C, right? So from A to B is a dollar, from B to C is a dollar. So that's two dollars. But that two dollars is a lot more affordable than say like an Uber ride that's that's not even a mile away is already six dollars. I mean, and imagine how much that is in gas, and then the cost of the car, you know, whatever vehicle, they can quickly rank up into mm -hmm. rack up into the like. A thousand dollars a month between maintenance, the vehicle, the auto insurance, and so even people who aren't disabled could use that source, right? Yeah, because a lot of time we wonder about those who may be able to work, but so they can't go with the free stuff we're talking about. But to understand, they can still use the resources that would still be more affordable. Let's say that they're able to work a minimum wage job full time, so they're not disabled, but they're around the same kind of threshold of income, right? I mean, maybe a thousand dollars a month working full time of minimum wage. I mean, so like that person could still file for Medicaid based on the fact yeah. that they don't have insurance and their income is below that threshold. And they could also file for Medicare as long as they can prove there's no way for them to get insurance through their job. And then further into that, so they're not disabled, so they can't prove that they can ride free, but they could pay the $1. That's what you pay as an alternative to free. If you can't get it free, you pay a dollar. Well, they could still write it and they could still pay that dollar that's, that's way less than Uber or the cost of maintaining and buying and all the other parts of the car. Right. So this is one of those examples. Remember the whole 211? This does not go back. <laughs> this one. <laughs> was one I watched, like what you're saying, you watched in your area, the cult. I watched Metro go around. But I did not go to the 201 for this one. I was like you watching these buses going around and being like, why can't I get on that? Or how do I get on that? Yeah. <laughs> So you got to look, look 
watch stuff around you, right? So your first observation was you saw it going, taking people places, right? So step one is to notice what is that one that you see around your place. Next step is to look it up on the internet. Free rides with Metro, free rides with Colt, free rides with, or uh, how to get rides with Colt, how to get rides with Metro. But something along the lines of finding that place and look up what's even that certain thing called in your county. Okay, so you know, so listeners now know um, <clears throat> County of, I can't remember it now, the cold, cold, <laughs> but they know your county. County of one. Lee. Oh, County of Lee. Lee oh, Cole. Yeah. Okay. Colt. Okay. C-O-L. Okay. Lee, County of Lee Transit System, Colts. Okay. Like the baby horses, Colts. The, oh, there we go. <laughs> Giddy up, baby horse. <laughs> Still, they, they know Lee County Transit, and they know what I gave that's, instead of being county of, is the name of the county and transit. It still follows the, the general pattern that the transits are somehow correlated with the word transit and the name of that county. So still you they could look Google up whatever transit near systems county. near me. County. Well, is it, I don't think they should just do county systems near me, um, but specific ones. So start with the county they live in. Because yeah, unless they want to walk or bike, just to get out of their county, they need at least that one to just run within whatever county they live. And then they need to see where around that county, their county system, their county transit can get them and then go from there. I found out how to get to Galveston was by first riding Fort Bend Transit to Metro to find out that Metro is actually a partnership of Harris County. But how did I know I had to somehow give a Metro? Because Harris County is most of Houston, and I knew, at least among the main highways, when my family drives, we have to go from Fort Bend County, take highways through Harris County, and somehow get into Galveston County to get into Galveston City. So I knew those three counties were involved, even if I didn't know what route the bus would take. And so that's where I painted the pathway of where I want to be able to go and said, these are the three counties. So first start in my own, Fort Bend County. How do I get from Fort Bend County to the Metro? Okay, Metro told me. And then I said from there, well, what if I want to ride from there and go to the beach? So how do I get from the Harris Transit to the Galveston Transit? Because that's Galveston County. So I made the path of those three transits I wanted to ride between with the goal of getting to that beach. Okay, but that's what told me what counties I want to be, whose transit system I want to be in. But then but then I started opening the door of what were the certain dropping points, drop-offs, pickups, this where you switch transits and then from there started with, I already had myself on my own Fort Bend County Transit, so that's how it's taken me to the gym and other places that are not medical that are at least in my own county. While I'm going through this uh, possibly eight-week process, already at least five-week process to get on the partnership, which is called Metro, that's between Fort Bend Transit and Harris County Transit. But still, that I painted the picture of where I want to go and then looked up what are the counties I have to travel through, and then looked up that the name of the county and the word transit. And then from there inquired of how to get registered at, to get free rides. Now, if you can't get free rides, you can just ask how to reserve a ride. Like the the minimum wage worker that can it's not disabled, but they can work, they still make you know less than eleven hundred dollars. Well, they would still be better off with paying that $1 for each county 
than the Uber or a lot of other stuff. So that's right. where it can be opportunities to people who are low income, but not necessarily disabled, just that the free part is only for the disabled that have income below 1100. But also okay. they have to be unable to drive if they're disabled. They cannot just say, hey, I want to stop paying my car bill. <laughs> <laughs> And like All you right. uncovered, I had a medical reason that I could not, that I could not uh, drive. I didn't just say I didn't want to drive. Right. Right. Okay. Well, um, does that about cover it for today? Yeah, that was a short brief one talking about how to get from the free rides with Medicaid to your medical to the different transits to find around your area and get access to to get to all the fun stuff. So you can go medical you need and fun activities, entertainment, and all in between. It's just want to be. Yep. You just got to know how to get there and, and look up what's happening in your area, right? Do there a little research. All yep. Right. Using our guidelines. So that's the name of the county and the word transit. And even if it's a twist like the cult, it would still be some form of correlation of those words. It's the name of the county and the word transit. Okay, so I guess that's it for us today. Um, again, thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Um, they're on our replays or here live with us. We are Mental Health Awareness with JAWS Coffee Chat every Monday, uh, 30 p.m. Central Time, 3.30 Eastern. So be sure to like, subscribe, and uh, share our channel page, social medias, or anywhere you found us. Check out our website, um, jensbooksandmore.com, for this and all our other uh, podcasts and shows, as well as all the other ventures that Jennifer is in on. So until next time, uh, next Monday, we... Thank you for joining us and hope you have a productive and enjoyable week. Take care, everybody.